Hey everyone, this is John Sunville, and today in this video I'll be showing you my processes when drawing a portrait. Now, as you can see, I've already got the line art all drawn here. Um, I might have to make a separate video on that because it is just really time consuming. All, all I'm trying to do is just get the lines placed as close to the reference picture as possible. That's all you're really doing for that, so hopefully if you have some line art already done, maybe, maybe you can just get some tips uh, for the shading and general colouring that I follow when doing these portraits. Okay, so as you see here, I have the line art all done. Um, it's not perfect at all, far from it, but I think the main thing when doing these kind of portraits is to just get the likeness between the subject and your own art. Because, I mean, if you paint the picture exactly like the photo, well, you're better off just having a photograph, right? So, yeah. So moving on, um, what I do from here is I add in this base skin color midtone. Just from eyeballing the reference picture, I find a color that sort of seems to be like the main midtone color of the overall face. And from there, I just roughly add in the darkest shadows that I see on the reference picture on one side of the face and proceed to add in the highlights in the same way on the other side, always opposite to the shadows. Now as you can see I've added in the purple background as I saw, noticed this on the reference picture. But I've always found it nice just to add like a little background colour there because it helps the colours just stand out more, if you can see. Finally I just go in and add in a little extra little bits of shadow and highlights that I see on the photo and proceed to use the blur tool to just smudge it all together and just blend it all together. Okay, and just a fair warning, most of this will be in sort of time-lapse, just to help speed things along. So, and I'll just be narrating over the top of it. So right here I'm just using the blur tool to just blend all the colors together. Um, hopefully achieve that 3D look to it. And then I just quickly go ahead and paint over the eyes in white. Now, just out of personal preference, I erase those colors that were, that sort of bled out from the original guidelines, and that is just so it's a little less distracting for me. Um, and then what I do is I grab the blur tool and sort of blur out the edges so they don't appear too sharp and jagged from the erasing. So what I'm doing here is I'm just grabbing this brown color and I'm going to use that as the outer edge shadow for the edge of the face. And I think it's better to do that instead of just using like a dark black line to define that outer edge. And here I'm just giving the cheek muscles a little more definition. Once again, just using the blur tool to make it look more natural. Here I am just adding shadow, to, more shadow to the cheeks and later on chin area, just to help the face pop out more, give that 3D feel to it. And as you can see, I'm just le leaving the eyes out for now. I will go on to those later when I've done the rest of the face. Okay, next is the lips. Um, this is probably one of the hardest parts is looking at the reference photo and then trying to decide what kind of colors you can choose from the color wheel to correspond to those colors. And what you want to do is um, get a mixture of them. Don't just go with one flat color, uh, get a mixture of colors. This was an advice from one of my good friends. He's a good artist and I sort of remembered that and stuck to it. It's a really good advice. And so as you see, when you blend them all together, it ends up actually looking really nice or aesthetically pleasing, as I should say. Anyway, so what I'm doing here now is uh, just darkening the inside of the mouth. This will later on uh, help provide contrast with the inside of the mouth and the teeth. Uh, basically what's going on here is I am blurring the uh, color boundaries between the black and the lip color. Uh, once again, give that natural look. Um, we don't want any clashing borders of colors and also the lip would have a bit of shadow there, so it helps with that as well. Okay, so I'm just going back and refining the lips a little bit. You'll find you do this often doing these kinds of portraits. You just look back and see where you might have missed a few things. Here I'm just adding two blobs of red and just smudging them into the lips. Uh, for this part, I'm just defining the upper lip a bit more. Um, once again, just eyeballing from the reference picture and trying to come up with a color on my own. And then I 
once again go ahead and smudge. Now all I'm doing here is just uh, adding more shadow around the eye area once again make the image pop out more. Okay so as you may see in the reference picture there is actually a large contrast for example the bright light on her left side of her face and the dark shadows on her right side and looking back at my uh, piece I thought I'd emphasize the shadows on her right on the right side of her face a little more so what I'm doing is I created a new layer and using the water uh, brush um, using a dark very dark gray color I've just gone over the the uh, right half of her face adding a mask of shadow okay and so now I have moved on to the eyes now judging by the uh, subject in the reference photo I assume she had uh, hazily greeny eyes, uh, forgive me if I'm wrong, but um, upon closer inspection I also noticed that there was also a bluish tint there, so that could have been due from the lighting, uh, reflection, or maybe it's just a natural eye colour. Either way, I laid down that uh, base dark green and then added some dark blue on top, and now I am proceeding to add some light green just around the pupil, and now I have the blur tool and I'm smudging it all together. Now we have a close-up of the eye. As you can see I added in the people in the middle of the iris and I noticed that the iris was a bit too green so I added some more dark blue on top with the airbrush and have started to blend the colors together again until I achieved that likeness. Okay, so now I am just drawing the eyelashes around the eyes, and just a word of advice, um, if you're only doing this on one layer like I am, it's better to uh, add in the details around the eye before you add in the eyelashes, so that the eyelashes themselves don't become a hindrance when you're um, like adding in shadows just under the, above and below the eye. And as you can see, I'm just resizing the eye a little bit, because I think I over-exaggerated its size, I do that often with eyes, I definitely need more practice in that area. And now just adding the little flicks of eyelashes. It's especially hard for me on this side because I am left-handed. It's hard to get that natural flick of your wrist when uh, doing curved lines, such as the eyelashes in this case. But anyway, so I've zoomed out just to make it a bit easier uh, and also see how it matches with the overall sort of eye itself and partially the face. Also note how I've left just a tiny sliver of space between the bottom eyelashes and the eye. Okay, so starting on the other eye, I noticed that that green hue was uh, more noticeable in this eye. So rather than starting off with a base green color, I did it with a dark blue and went over the top with this dark green. And right now I'm just uh, using the blur tool and just blending the colors together and now adding some darker color for the top of the eye where there's noticeably more shadow um, on the iris. Okay, so I've just jumped forward to do the eyebrow right now and uh, this particular subject's eyebrow, um, it follows a certain path. The little hairs sort of don't just go straight. Um, yeah, every person's one is different. This one, it goes straight across and just before the uncolored part, it sort of angles down before going straight again. And so I just go ahead and fill in the rest of the eyebrow using a very little uh, short strokes. So moving on to her left eyebrow, I noticed that it could be split into two parts. Um, I'll just draw a little box to demonstrate what I mean. Within this little box, the direction of the eyebrow hairs actually point upward. Where, and then they start to fan out a bit where they go start to go across her face. Okay, so here I've just added a new layer and I am now going over the top of the eyes with a dark blue. Now I didn't use black because you don't want to keep using black for shadows every single time. It's good to just experiment around with different colors and it just looks more attractive and realistic. Finally, I just decreased the opacity of the layer to give that shadowy look and blew it all together. Here I am just adding highlights to the irises and the white of the eye. Um, I noticed there wasn't just one particular highlight that I usually do in my drawings, there were several, so I made sure to add those in. So I went ahead and uh, colored the 
teeth are very light grey colour. Um, you don't want to paint them white because uh, the teeth are cast in shadow inside the mouth. So uh, that being said, I am um, just outline the teeth with a very light brown colour. Once I finish outlining the teeth, I go in with a slightly darker grey colour to add more shadow, uh, particularly to the upper half of the teeth where they'd be kind of obsc obscured by the upper lip. And then I grab a very light, almost white uh, colour and add highlights to the bottom of the teeth. Alrighty, so what you see here is me just adding more uh, highlight, uh, going really light this time. Uh, practically using white uh, just to add all those highlights where I see necessary and again using the blur tool to smudge it all together. Okay so now I've uh, started on a new layer and I am now using the airbrush tool to add in the hair using uh, relatively long strokes to convey that illusion of hair. Um, I've also got the water brush to add some shadow where the top of their hair would cast shadow. <laughs> Sometimes they get a bit sidetracked and uh, start adding some other details I missed out before onto the face and further refine it a little bit before resuming my original task. Okay, going back to the hair, um, I pick out places that sort of seem to have like patches of color from the reference picture and apply this to the uh, my own piece. And um, yeah, and then sort of uh, add strands of hair on top of those colors and hopefully um, it's just my technique hopefully makes it look a little more realistic uh, and then um, then I'm done. Um, in total this took about oh, so many hours uh, I did this over the course of two days but well worth it. Um, it's all still practice for me as you can probably tell I'm still getting used to doing digital uh, colouring for portraits. Uh, anyway, I'd like to thank Tanya for giving me permission to use her photo for this tutorial video for you guys. Um, I hope you learned something, maybe picked up a few tips and hints from me. That'd be awesome if you did. And thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned.